So this here is the initialization step of our initialization, initialization, in Initialization. Initialization. So it is the in <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Welcome to another video of C++ for beginners. In this video I want to talk about nesting loops. In my previous videos we have talked about while loop, do while loop, and for loop. And now I want to show you the example on how you can really combine and nest those loops. So if you haven't watched my previous videos or you are not familiar with loops at all, I recommend you to watch those. I'm going to link those in the description of this video. And also before we start, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon as well. So what are we going to do in this video? I want to really show you how you can nest for loop and do while loop. And the example that I'm going to use to explain that is going to be following. So I want my user, which is going to be a student, let's say to enter three grades or more if you want. We are going to use three for this example. And I want to those grades, I want those grades to be between one and five. And then I want to write out the average grade. So the average grade between those three that he has entered. So let's start building our program. The first thing that I need to explain is since we are going to enter three grades, that means that we are going to repeat that entering process three times. And for that, I'm going to use for loop. So I'm going to write for, and then in these parentheses here, I'm going to put my initial set setup of for loop which is going to be the first thing is going to be initial value of our counter. So I'm going to declare a counter, which is going to be called I. And initially I'm going to give it a value of zero. That is the first thing. The second thing that I need to put in these parentheses here is going to be the condition that our loop checks each time that it wants to run a block of code, which is going to be this block of code that we put inside these parentheses. So that condition we put here. And that condition is going to be while our i is less than three. So we want to make three iterations. In the first iteration, our i has the value of zero. In the second iteration, it's going to have the value of one. And then in our third iteration, it's going to have the value of two. So we have made three iterations. After that, it gets the value of three, but this condition here is not going to be true anymore. So then our for loop is not going to be executed anymore. So that is the second thing. And then the third thing which we need is going to be really increasing that value of our counter in each iteration. So after each iteration, and I'm going to put here this increment on our I variable. Okay, so in this block of code here, we are going to repeat three times something. So what is that something? That is going to be really the process of our user entering the value for his grade. And since we said that that grade needs to be between one and five, I am going to use do while loop for that. How? Well, I'm going to write out do, okay. And then here I'm going to put while, which is going to be the condition. So here we prompt our user to enter the grade. And then we, we say here, you are going to have to enter that grade while that grade is less than one or greater than five. So since we don't have any variable that we are going to use to enter that grade, I will have to declare it here. So I'm going to say here int grade like this. Okay. And then let's prompt our user in this block here to enter his grade. So I'm going to write out C out and let's say enter grade and I am going to use the current value of my counter so that I can really say um, which grade my user is entering. So enter first grade, second grade and third grade. 
So I'm going to say i plus 1, like this. Why plus 1? Well, because our counter starts at 0, and it wouldn't make much sense to say to our user, please enter grade 0. So that is why I'm increasing this value of my i when I want to write out a message to my user. Okay, like this. So here I'm going to write out please enter a grade and after that I need to accept that grade that my user enters in my grade variable. So I'm going to say see in grade like this. And we are going to repeat this process here for a single grade while our user enters a grade that is less than one or grade is greater than five. Okay, so our program is really going to prompt our user, please enter grade one, and then he enters six, for example, and then our program checks this condition here and says, okay, you have missed this part here, so go back and then please enter grade one. So first grade again. Okay, so if I run my program now, let's just prove that very quickly. So our program, our program says now enter first grade, so enter grade one. And then let's say that I enter nine, for example, it prompts me again to enter first grade because I have not obeyed this rule here, this part here. So I'm going to say this time, for example, five. And then it says, okay, you have successfully entered first grade. Let's now enter second grade. So for that second grade, let's enter, for example, zero. And then it prompts me again, you have not entered correct value for grade two, please enter it again. And let's say that this time I'm going to enter one. And then it asks for third grade. And let's say that this time third grade is going to be three. So our program now has successfully accepted this third grade. And now our program is going to really uh, finish its execution because we haven't written anything else after this part here. So there is something else that we need to write. And since we want to calculate the average grade of our user, what we are going to need is going to be really to sum all of these grades that our user enters. So I am going to declare a variable which is going to really hold that sum of our user's grades. So I am going to put it here. I'm going to call it sum. And initially I'm going to assign it a value of zero. And later I'm going to explain why. So I have declared a variable that is going to be of type int and I have called it sum and assigned it a value of zero. So this sum here is going to each time that our user enters a grade and we really, um, we really check that that grade is valid grade. After that, we want our sum to hold whatever it was previously holding plus the value of our grade like this. Okay, so why I have assigned a value of zero to my sum? Because zero is a neutral value when it comes to adding numbers. You add zero to whichever number and then you get that same number. And in a situation where we didn't assign any value to our sum, we would get really um, an error. So if I try to run my program now, you see that it prompts me with an error and it says, uninitialized local variable sum used because it does not have any value assigned to this variable here. It is going to say really that it does not know how to add the value, so the value of our grade, to our sum. So that is why we need to assign some value to our sum variable. Okay, so and that value is going to be zero because zero is neutral when it comes to adding numbers. Okay, so now I can really run my program and as you can see um, that error has disappeared. So I'm going to stop my program and let's very quickly write out this sum that we have calculated here. So I'm going to say C out and I'm going to write out sum like this. Sum is equal to and then let's write out the value of our sum and let's add end line like this. So I am going to run my program once more. 
it prompts me to enter first grade, I'm going to say that my first grade is, is going to be, for example, five. And then my second grade is going to be, for example, six. Uh -uh, that's an error, so please enter your second grade again. So I'm going to enter this time two, let's say. And then for my third, third grade, let's enter one, for example. And it says that the sum of my grade grades is equal to eight, which is correct. So one plus two plus five, that is going to equal to eight. So what we are left to do, now we should only really divide our sum by the count of our grades, which is three, because we have hard coded this value here to three. So our user can enter only three grades. You can really use a variable for this, or you can hard code it to any other value that you want and need. So here, after this line of code here, what I need to do is following. So I'm going to say C out, and then let's say average is equal to, <clears throat> let's say average grade is equal to, and let's write out the result. So that is going to be sum divided by three. Okay, is it though? <laughs> So I'm going to run my program and let's enter, for example, value two, and then again, value two, and then let's enter, for example, value four. And then it says that average grade is equal to two, which is not correct, but why has this happened? So as you can see here, we have used two integer variables. So our sum is integer value, and then three is integer value as well. So when you divide two integer values, the result is also going to be integer value. So in order to get a floating point, a decimal point number, you really need to convert one of these two into a float type. So you can say either here, you can say float. So please convert my sum variable into float and then divide. Or you can put here this point zero, or you can leave both of these, whichever you prefer. So I'm going to leave both of these like this. So if I run my program once more, it prompts me again to enter first grade. So I'm going to say that my first grade is equal to five and then my second grade is also five. And then let's say that the third grade of our user is going to be nine. So our program prompts us again to enter the third grade because it needs to be in this interval here. So I'm going to say now that uh, the value of my third grade is going to be three, which is correct value. And after that, as you can see, it writes out that the sum of these three grades is 13 and then average grade is 4.33333. So that was an example on how you can really combine and nest loops in order to solve complex problems. I am going to paste the text of this program here in the description of this video. So if you need it, you can find it there. And thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon, also share it with anyone who would like to learn programming. And I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye.